Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to have Rachel Hina-Jopsa from Gale Academic Outreach. Um, and she is a trainer on the Gale Academic Outreach and Engagement Team who loves to connect with faculty and students with the resources that they need. And she's always eager to help Gale's library partners and their students make the most of their archives, databases, and eBooks holdings in order to improve access and engagement. Rachel has a BA from the University of Michigan in classical language and literature, and she's always up for a chat about Papyrus, Aristophanes, or science fiction. So we're excited to have her talk about Gale in Context opposing viewpoints today. And um, you can use the chat box to ask any questions along the way. Thanks, Julia. Uh, yeah, as Julia said, hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Hanahosa. I'm a trainer on the Gale Academic Outreach and Engagement Team. And we're here today to talk about Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. So on our agenda today, we're going to spend some time in PowerPoint, uh, taking a look at the key characteristics and features of Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. And we're going to review what kind of content you can find in this resource uh, and show how it provides a pathway to critical analysis of various different perspectives on today's most divisive and important uh, topics. We're going to also review some of the tools that you can find in opposing viewpoints, and then we're going to actually hop into a live demo where we can preview those tools, take a look at how you can use it for your research and find different content in a various different ways. Uh, and at the end of the session today, we're going to have what I call a hidden gem, which is just a, a preview of a often not known about tool that you can utilize uh, to integrate Gale in context to opposing viewpoints in your everyday research. Of course, we'll have a few minutes at the end for Q&A, and I'll also provide um, some information on where you can find additional um, support for this resource as well. And please do ask questions if you have them as we go along. Uh, you can utilize the chat, or if there's not too many of us here, you could potentially just uh, raise your hand and speak up if you'd like. I definitely want to make sure that I'm addressing any questions that you have. Uh, so before we jump into the content, I do like to have a little bit of an interaction here to see who we have um, out in the audience. So if you wouldn't mind, you can take your cursor and kind of hover in the top portion, top middle portion rather of your screen. You should have some zoom controls that pop down. If you click on the um, the options menu, you should be able to click then on annotate. This allows you to draw, type, um, and or add a stamp um, anywhere on this slide. And I'd like you to show me uh, if you're a librarian, if you're a student, if you're something else at Gateway, and whether or not, or really rather, how do you, you know, describe yourself as being familiar with opposing viewpoints? Uh, do you use it a lot and you're an expert in it, or you not have any idea whatsoever what this resource is, or have you heard of it and maybe used it once or twice? So just take a moment and let me know, you know, who you are uh, and um, what your skill level uh, or understanding of opposing viewpoints is. And if you want to, if you, let's say you put under uh, the star under other, you can go ahead and write in the chat what your position is or your, your role is. I always am interested to know who we have on the line. Okay, so there's not too many, so I think that's probably it, but uh, so no experts, and, and that's totally okay, because I'm here to make you an expert today. Um, so we should be able to address any lapses or gaps you have in your um, information or your knowledge of opposing viewpoints. Uh, and for those of you that aren't familiar at all, we should give you a pretty um, concise understanding of what you can do with opposing viewpoints. And again, if you have questions, please pop it in the chat or raise your hand. I'm always happy to address uh, questions live. One more question that I have for you. I don't think this is applicable, uh, but if you are a student, and you can feel free to type your major or area of study in the chat. I'm always curious to see what folks are using opposing viewpoints to research. Oh, and Brian, you can't find the controls. That's okay. Sometimes they can be a little bit particular. Um, but uh, yeah, so librarian familiar, great to hear it. And folks, if you do have trouble uh, using the annotation tools, you can always type it in the chat like Brian did. Uh, I don't want it to be a barrier. It's just a fun little tool where you can add stars and what have you. Okay, so let me go ahead and clear these beautiful annotations. One moment.
Okay. Let me go ahead and check the, the chat. Arts major, that's awesome. Students, great to see you. Okay, wonderful to have some students on. I get a lot of librarians, so sometimes it's it's great to, to mix it up a little bit. Okay, so let's move on to our next slide here. Let me just make sure I can remove your stars. One moment. Claire, okay. Great. All right. So let's talk about Gale in Context Opposing Viewpoints. Uh, so Opposing Viewpoints is our premier resource uh, for credibly sourced viewpoints and reference content that uh, factor or focus around today's most pressing and relevant issues. Uh, things like climate change, voting rights, medical insurance, police, police brutality, you name it. If it's you know, being talked about, you're going to be able to find content on it in opposing viewpoints. Um, in total, the resource has over 20,000 different viewpoint articles that come from premier sources, um, as well as various Greenhaven and Gale titles. The provided viewpoints that you'll find here present issues in various or from rather various vantage points and are often introduced with what we call commentaries. And now it'll explain the background of the topic and also provide some background on the author. And it really helps you to put the, the viewpoint that you're reading into perspective. Uh, many also contain what we dubbed uh, critical thinking questions uh, before you go ahead and read the article, which prompts you to, again, just examine the viewpoint with a more critical eye. Uh, each topic or issue that you find here is going to offer multiple viewpoints, including pros and cons, and is also going to offer an unbiased overview uh, to allow you to get that context around an issue before you start reading through different viewpoints. Uh, in addition to these viewpoints, you're of course going to find thousands of reference articles from publications like the New York Times and Newsweek, which again allows you to find that, that um, relevant contextual information. You're also going to be able to access millions of full text articles um, from periodicals, magazines, academic journals, uh, and newspapers. And you're also going to be able to find relevant and recent content that covers things like current events and news and commentary and economics and the environment and what have you. Uh, and all of this reference content is updated daily, so you should always have the newest content available at your fingertips. In addition to written content, uh, this resource contains thousands of multimedia things like statistics, many of which are represented um, in infographics or in interactive format. Um, there are also, I think there's over 400 different interactive um, items within opposing viewpoints right now. So things like charts and tables um, and graphs and maps. You're also going to find thousands of videos, hundreds of thousands of images and audio files from sources like the New York Times, uh, AP Video News, uh, the Tribune Content Agency, AFP, and of course, NPR. Also included in Opposing Viewpoints, which is pretty unique, are our primary source documents. We have a little over a thousand that, that come from the Essential Primary Source series, and this will provide primary source content on things like human and civil rights, um, uh, society or family in, in society um, and environmental issues, just to name a few of the, the topics covered. So in a nutshell, if you had to describe opposing viewpoints, I would say that it strives to pull together um, highly varied and informative content from various different credible sources so that you students and researchers can analyze many different perspectives uh, in conjunction with reviewing uh, relevant contextual content in order to then develop your own conclusions without the danger of false facts and unreliable information that we very often find online. Let me go ahead and check the chat just a moment. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Julia. Okay, so one key pathway I want to point out to you today that can be highly useful to explore opposing viewpoints um, are our topic pages. Uh, opposing viewpoints has over 450 different topic pages, and it says 466, but I think since I created this PowerPoint, it's now up to 482, I want to say. So we increase the number of topic, topic pages weekly, uh, and these topic page, pages cover important issues like voter suppression, homelessness, reproductive rights, climate change, just to name a few. Um, and as I said, we're constantly updating these as the political and social climate around us, around us changes. Uh, each page is going to include that unbiased overview, uh, an informative overview of the topic that you're reading. And you're also going to see a wide range of different viewpoints. And additionally, you're going to find um, links to all that relevant 
textual or contextual content I mentioned, things like articles and videos and websites and, um, and statistics and what have you for a very quick and easy jumping off point for your research from one particular topic. Um, these pages are organized with you in mind, so you should be able to find everything relevantly uh, relevant on this page, cleanly organized for you to um, click into. Here's that event that overview, and then here are all the different pieces of content you can find. So right at the very top, you'll be able to find this information on the topic overview. Now let's take a look at an example of one of these uh, before we jump into the resource. So here's an example of one of the topic pages that we have. So if you as a student or a scholar was interested in researching public health and personal freedom, uh, you could do so a few different ways. You could find this topic page from the home page. You could find it um, by utilizing browse issues, um, or you can utilize the basic search as well. Um, once you click on this page, you can again go to that um, this overview here, click on read more, which will bring you to this overview page. Um, the first thing you'll see is this overview, which is usually between 2,000 and 3,000 words, so not excessively long, and it's trying to give you a concise understanding of the political and historical importance of this particular topic or issue. What's really nice about this overview is it's going to provide you with a, a sidebar within the article. This can sometimes have pros and cons really concisely, concisely stated, like these shown here, or it'll have things like main ideas or critical thinking questions as well. So it'll always be able to help you pull out relevant information from the overview that you're looking at. Uh, once you've just decided to you know, read the overview and you've gotten the, the contextual information you need, you can jump back into the page and start looking at uh, different types of content. You can review featured viewpoints, which showcase for you um, different samplings of the different types of viewpoints that we have in the resource itself, or rather within the topic page. Um, you can also find really great um, contextual information like academic journals. Uh, you can find also things like the um, the infographics that I mentioned, which will be very easy to click into. And we, of course, have different multimedia like videos. So if you've done a lot of reading and you want to take a break and review some content in a different format, the audio and the video really allows you to, to you know, use that different sort of, of, of visual versus um, or listening versus reading to help you take a break from that as well. So overall, um, all these different types of viewpoints and these articles and these facts and data and media really allow you as a researcher to not only develop an understanding of the different, you know, the intersection of, of public uh, health and personal liberty, but also allows you to analyze and understand all the different various viewpoints on this particular and nuanced topic, and then hopefully develop your own opinion based on the viewpoints uh, and also be able to do things like be able to recognize credible sources, spot biases and unbiased language, and be able able to start recognizing that outside of your library content as well. We could quickly check the chat. Yes, peer reviewed articles are included, Chris. Okay, so here's a few tools that I'll show you in more detail once we jump into the resource itself. Uh, the sticky toolbar is really great. It's visible on every single page. It allows you to easily share whatever you're looking at, download it, print it, export it. Um, within the content itself, we have interlinking. So if you see a word that you want more context on, you can click on it and then click on one of the articles for you know, Afrikaners where it's shown here to learn more about um, what this particular word means in the context of what you're reading. Uh, we also have quick citation tools that help you quickly export the site information for whatever you're looking at. And we have a really great topic finder tool to help you go from a very broad topic and then to drill down into, in a kind of interesting and tactile way to make new discoveries and find new connections. Uh, but rather than describe these, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the resource so you can see how these things work in action. So one moment, go ahead and open this up. Okay, can everybody see my, my screen here for Gale and Context Opposing Viewpoints? Thumbs up. Yes, perfect, thank you, Julia. Okay, so let's go ahead and explore, um, you know what, one second. There we go. Explore Yale and Context Opposing Viewpoints from the home page. So from here, I think probably the first thing you might notice um, is our issues of interest. So this is going to be one of the topic pages, or rather three of the topic pages that we have available in kind of a rotating um, um, item here. Uh, this changes 
a couple every couple of days, potentially weekly, depending, and usually is a reflection of what's being um, researched at the time or what's important in the current you know social and political climate. So you can always you know just click on one of these to enter into you know quote unquote a hot topic, or you can scroll down and browse all of the issues that we have. So each one of these, um, or sorry, orange, I almost said, um, blue um, hyperlinks are a different topic page. And these are all going to be organized into these larger buckets, if you will, of, of issues so like health and medicine, energy and environmentalism, law and politics. You can go ahead and click into one of these if you'd like. Or from the home page, you can browse all the different issues by clicking here. Initially, it's going to show you every single one that we have, which is a lot. You can go up here and scroll to various different um, broader topics, let's say um, society and culture, for example. And what's great about this is every time we update or add a topic page, it's going to be highlighted in orange. So you can constantly see new content that's been added to these topic pages. Uh, now, if you don't want to just browse the issues and sort of casually scroll through, uh, you can always use basic search as well. So if we know for sure that we want to look at, let's say, fake news, um, we start typing that in, we have the option to click on this emboldened word here, this, this phrase rather. If you see a bolden term um, here in the basic search, that means that that does have, in fact, a, um, a topic page, which you can click on and be brought to that page. Another way you can um, access the uh, brow or the, the topic pages if you're from you know anywhere inside this resource, let's say you're an advanced search, you can click browse issues and be brought again to that, that browse issues page. Let's go ahead and put our search in, click on this and be brought to this particular um, topic overview. So as I mentioned in the PowerPoint, we have that overview. You have the option to read it if you'd like. You don't have to, of course. Um, you have the option to look at the, the, the sidebar with main ideas. Uh, you can scroll through here and just read parts of the article if you'd like. Um, or, of course, you can use this to find additional content, um, additional articles, related subjects, whatever, um, you know, matches your research needs. Uh, once you, you're done with the overview, you can go back to the uh, topic page here and really start diving into your research. On this page, you're going to see this bar here that showcases all the different types of content that we have available on this topic page. You can decide to jump into just one type of content, like let's say academic journals, if you'd like. Or you can scroll down and look at the little buckets. These are samples of the different types of content. So, you know, here's three academic journals, some viewpoints, uh, reference content, infographics, videos, etc. So really, it, if you know you want just one type of content, you can jump into that or you can go ahead and just, you know, browse throughout what we have. Another great tool is Search Within. So if you know you want to look at fake news and social media, and let's say you want to look at, um, you know, election fraud or something along those lines, you can add in an additional search here um, within, and you'll search just the results that are available on this page. So just a nice tool there. Now, one thing I want to point out is the difference between the featured viewpoints and then the regular viewpoints. So the featured viewpoints are just a number of viewpoints that have been hand selected by the editorial team from the overall bucket of viewpoints as a representation, if you will, or a sampling of the available viewpoints that we have. Uh, sometimes there are a lot of viewpoints, so this is a nice way to kind of start your research, if you will, and get a, a kind of a varied and a balanced um, example or sampling of the different viewpoints. So here you should be able to find, you know, pros and cons on various different facets of this topic uh, instead of, you know, having to maybe read five of, 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 this, of similar viewpoints. You get, you know, more of a variety and a fewer number of viewpoints here. One thing you might notice as you scroll through featured viewpoints or even all the viewpoints is that you're not going to see pro or con listed next to any of the viewpoints. Uh, this is important because we feel that we don't want to make the decision ourselves to say to you, oh, this is pro or this is con. And what's more, some of these topics, well, in fact, most of the to these topics are rather complicated, complex, nuanced, and sometimes it's not as simple as saying this is pro and this is con. We don't want to simplify the research for you, and we also want you to develop um, the skills necessary to decipher 
um, a, a pro or con based on things like the language of the top of the article or uh, the, the language of the title or what have you. So we want you to be able to make those decisions for yourself and not walk in with any, you know, already held biases. So, for example, let's just take a look at one of these. So we have social media censorship violates the First Amendment. So this one, you know, you could potentially consider not necessarily pro fake news, but anti regulation of fake news. So a little bit more, again, of a nuanced um, kind of pro or con uh, labeling there that we wouldn't necessarily want to just add on willy nilly to this particular article. So if you jump into it, you're interested in it, you want to read, you can get this article commentary first and foremost before you get the actual article itself. Now, this is going to provide you with information on the topic that's being talked about here, in this case, social media censorship and the First Amendment. And importantly to me is there's going to be information on the author, Bill Haggerty, which is a U.S. senator. Uh, so this gives you information on why this individual um, is, you know, somebody we should potentially listen to or maybe not listen to on this topic. And most importantly, you get to read some of his background and then understand maybe some of his own biases. Uh, this is important because they want to always take into account you know, who's writing what we're reading and what their background is and how that might be impacting how they um, interpret these 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 facts or this, this situation. So something that can kind of help you take that knowledge and apply it elsewhere in your in your life as well to, to really expand beyond just opposing viewpoints here. Uh, in addition to this background information, you're going to see some of um, those critical thinking questions I mentioned. There's usually three or so. It's going to ask questions that you can consider before you start reading um, about not just what Bill is trying to say or what maybe his opinion is, but also what you think about his opinion and about the information that he's providing. So just a, a nice way to kind of make sure you're thinking critically about the content that you're reading as you go through this particular article. Now, as I mentioned, in the future viewpoints, you should be able to find a variety of viewpoints, right? So we have social media censorship violates the First Amendment. And then if we scroll down, we have things like fighting fake news helps save democracy. So this is maybe the opposite of you know, the one that we saw, indicating that instead of hindering democracy, actually censoring fake news is something that helps democracy. Uh, again, we get more information on Alexander, on his credentials and on the background of what he's saying. And again, those um, critical thinking questions that we should consider before we go ahead and read Alexander's um, article. So those, those are just a few key, I guess, factors of, of future, featured viewpoints and regular viewpoints as well. Um, are there any questions so far on what I've shown? No? Okay, great. So um, next up, I want to showcase just a few of the other types of content that you can find on these, this um, topic page. So scrolling down, of course, we have things like academic journals and reference content. Uh, but we also have um, things like our infographics. Um, and this is, is a really nice um, addition to the written material that you're used to reading. Uh, you can use this to add statistics um, and facts to your research, uh, especially if you're writing a paper, let's say, on something. You can utilize these pretty well. A lot of them have at least some interaction that you can read through here to kind of, you know, make the, the data pop a little bit. Um, and we also have one of my favorite pieces here um, are websites. So this is actually content that is not housed on um, Gale and Context Opposing Viewpoints, but they're um, credible websites that we think are relevant to this topic, which may be able to benefit you or benefit your research. So here we're talking about fake news and misinformation on the internet and on social media. And here you can go ahead and do your own research and start maybe applying what you've learned by using things like Snoops and Fact Check and um, pull the fact. So what's great is if you click on this, you're going to get not just a link to the website, but also information on the actual website. So you can decide if it's something that you want to take a look at. Um, and I think having these websites available really does help um, researchers figure out um, what a credible website looks like versus an uncredible website. One last thing I want to show on the topic page will be our related topics. So if you scroll all the way down past all this great content, you're going to see um, these little um, tags here. Now, these are all topics that are related, indexed with the one that we're looking at currently. 
So if you're kind of started out with, you know, fake news and social media and your research has brought you more to politics and media, you can click on that and be brought into that new topic finder super easily. So it allows you to kind of uh, kind of ride the wave with the natural flow of your research as you go ahead and start reading more content and developing your own thesis and opinions. So let's say you're researching something that doesn't have a viewpoint or rather not a viewpoint, but a, a topic page. That doesn't mean there's no content here. Uh, you can always use our advanced search or our basic search to search for anything that you might think is, is important or interesting. So for example, if you're maybe studying criminal justice, you might wanna put in something like criminology and do a search. Doing this is going to bring you to our search results page. Now this page is gonna be organized very much like the page we were just on. Uh, so it shouldn't be confusing to jump between the, the topic page and the search page. Um, all the content is organized here by content type. You can click on a particular content to see just that content if you'd like, um, or you can use these buckets to look at a few different pieces of content uh, from each bucket if you'd like as well. Now, what's great about this is you can start with this, you know, kind of larger, broader topic, and you can filter down if you'd like. So let's say um, we have a, a lot of journals here that may be too many for us to read through. We want to start adding some filters. Like, for example, um, let's see here. Maybe we really want to take a look at, um, let's say, violence. We really want to take a look at um articles and viewpoint essays only and we really want full text obviously so that go ahead and take takes down our number of, of pieces of content to a much more palatable number um, and if we decide that this isn't really matching up with what we actually wanted you can very easily remove these different filters by just clicking the x next to the filter now, another thing that you can do if let's say you have that broad topic and you really don't know where you wanna go with this research is utilize the topic finder. Now, this is a really visual way to, 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 to um, drill down from a larger topic to a much smaller related topic. Uh, it's going to use an algorithm taking the you know, subjects and, and titles and words of the, of the subset of your top, top results and then filter it in here so you can visually see and dial down into different topics. And it's great because you can sometimes find connections you wouldn't have thought to maybe research on your own. So let's say you know, you're starting with criminology, um, youth sticks out to you as something you want to research, you can click on that. Immediately, we're going to get some more results, 11. So again, much more palatable. And let's say even from that, we know we want to take a look at conditions of use in the justice system. Um, you can click on that and be brought to two topics or rather two search results that are very easy to read and you can kind of start your research there. Once you click on an article, whether it's from the topic finder or from the, the main uh, basic search, you're going to be brought to the search results page, which looks like this. This is going to look pretty much the same for every piece of content um, that you have access to in opposing viewpoints. Obviously, the words and everything may change a little bit between audio and video and what have you. But generally, if you can utilize one of these pages, you can utilize them all. So it should be a pretty streamlined um, and, and simple transition between different types of content. So you're always going to have the title at the very top here as well as the important metadata, like the data was published, the authors, where it was published, the length, document type, et cetera, will be up here. And below that, of course, we're going to have the article itself that you can read. Now, before you start reading this, you can do lots of things to make this uh, piece of content more accessible for you. You can translate this into over 40 different languages. You can decrease or increase the font size, which is great if you're on a smaller device or just perhaps it's easier for your eyes to read a larger font. Uh, you can also change the display options, which is highly useful for those with different learning needs or preferences. Uh, so here, let's say I read better with a green black background with a different font and with um, larger letter spacing. That's just easier for me to understand. Uh, once you created that particular, um, you know, uh, sorry, <laughs> display options, then you can go ahead and have this be sticky throughout your session. So let's say you read this article, you liked it, you wanted to read one that was also similar, you can click into that and your um, preferences are going to stay sticky. 
So that's super useful if you want to do an hour or more of research and you don't want to have to apply those same display options every time you click on a new piece of content. Now it's very easy to go back to those default display options, just click on back to the default settings. Another great tool is the tool here, the Read Speaker. Uh, this is going to be built in for every written you know, piece of content we have. This will automatically read out loud for you the content you're reading. Uh, it also has some really great options for settings, um, including turning off or on the text highlighting, changing what's highlighted, changing the color of what's highlighted, and what's really great is changing the speed. So for folks who use read speakers a lot, oftentimes they do want it to be on the fast pace because they're used to it. And some folks may want it to be on slow. And once again, these are sticky for your session. So if you do this once and you use uh, the read speaker for five, six, whatever number of documents, this will continue. Whatever you've chosen here will continue. And of course, you can restore to the default settings without a problem. Okay, now in addition to these accessibility um, tools here, we have some exportation tools or uh, right above the article on the right. So this allows you to send to your Google Drive, your Microsoft OneDrive, allows you to email it to yourself or others. You can download the PDF, print it. Uh, and what's really great about this, these drives are usually if you have a drive like OneDrive or Google Drive, it's associated of course with your email and you're pretty much always logged in. So if you click on that, it's going to allow you to sign in super quickly and then a matter of seconds, you have this document available in your OneDrive. It'll be under opposing viewpoints in the title of the article. So a super easy way to take articles that have interest to you, throw them in your in your um, in your OneDrive if you need more time later to read them. Um, some more great tools can be located up here in the upper right. Uh, some of these are duplicitous. We have the send tool. Um, the download, the print, and this is great because you can use this on, let's say, a search results page. So um, if we go back, let's say, to previous page. Oh. And let's say we want to save these search results because we put a few different um, filters on. You can do that get link again and, and get a permanent link to this page for you to save um, to always come back to. And what's great is if you do this uh, and new search results are added, they'll show up here for you. So you'll be able to continue your research when new content is provided. Let's go ahead and go back into an academic journal here. Um, and in addition to the get link tool, which again also can be used for this page, you have again the print and the download tool as well. And what's really great about the sticky toolbar is you have the citation tool. This allows you to take the citation information for the article that you're on, um, select it and paste it, uh, get it in a couple different citation formats, and export it as well to various different tools. So if you use EasyBib or you want it in your OneDrive, you can very easily export this along. Now, one tool that's really unique and very useful if you're used to doing your research and note taking online is our highlights and notes tools. And it's very easy to utilize. So let's say you're reading this article, you find that this particular paragraph really supports your thesis. You can highlight that, pick whatever color you'd like, and then take a note. And then save it. And you can do this um, all throughout your research do different color coordinating. On and on, and on different uh, pieces of content as well. And then once you've finished your session, you have all your notes and, and highlights, you can go ahead and view them here. It's going to always give you a link to the actual piece of content that you took the notes in, show the text that you highlighted, and then show the notes that you took. Now, if you're like me and you use colors a lot, you can also label the different colors. Like let's say green means supports thesis. Purple means needs more research. You can apply this and then use those notes to add whatever you know notes you may have on this particular um, few pages or few um, sentences. So something that you can utilize so instead of having to take notes you know, in a Word document or writing it out as you research, you can do so easily. The one caveat of this is that it doesn't save across sessions. 
because you're not logged into a, you know, a secondary account within opposing viewpoints. So if you want to utilize this, always remember to just export it before you exit out of your page, leave the library, what have you. Uh, you can send it to yourself via email, OneDrive. You can download it um, or you can print it as well. So whatever works best for you to export um, your, your notes and highlights. It's also nice too, in my opinion, because it provides that bibliographic information as well for all the pieces of content that you took highlights and notes from. So let's say you, you're looking for quotes, you can, you know, um, highlight your quotes, and then you're going to get the quotes printed out as well as the bib information for those quotes that you're looking at. So just a super useful tool there. Hey, Rachel, it looks like we have a question in the chat. Yeah. Where, so when you go to your highlights and notes, um, you will have to export it in order to save it. Uh, so it doesn't save within opposing viewpoints because you're logging in using your credentials. It's not like a secondary login like with Peterson's. Uh, so you have to either send it to yourself via email, save it to your OneDrive, your Google Drive. Um, you can download it as well, or you can print it, uh, whatever works for you. But you cannot save it within opposing viewpoints by itself across sessions. Okay, perfect. Um, one last thing I want to point out is the um, different interlinking. Let's go back here. So when you see the um, blue highlighted text within an article, this means that your library has related content for that particular term. So if you want to, you know, read more content on prejudice, for example, you can click on that. And then it'll show you new articles for that particular um, term or sentence. Uh, and you it always pops up in a new tab for you. So it's not going to replace whatever you're looking at. You don't have to worry about losing the article that you're already on. It's just a fun way to find additional content uh, and find context for words that may be a little unfamiliar to you or that you just want more information on. Okay, perfect. So um, ex the Explore panel here is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll review it for a moment. Uh, it'll always give you links to um, articles that are similar to the one that you're reading. It'll always allow you to find related subjects as well. Uh, these are subjects that are indexed with this, the um, article that you're on. So you can find really great content that way. Um, any questions so far on what I've shown in terms of the uh, search results page or the, um, the document page? No? Okay, great. So one other thing I wanted to show to you is the advanced search. So this is really useful if you know exactly what you're looking for, you have a finalized thesis and you really, you know, want to be able to immediately apply filters. You can go here and search for a number of different terms, like let's say we're searching for racism and policy. You can decide if you want to do a keyword search or let's say a subject search. When you change that field, it's going to give you information on what that means. So keyword is contains these terms in the field keys, does not search the entire document. Subject is our tag with the subject using our metadata. So totally up to you how you want to utilize that. And if you're unfamiliar with advanced search features and functions, we always have these search tips here. So if you're, let's say, unfamiliar with Boolean operators, for example, you can click on this and find out more information on how to use and or or, how to use proximity like n n and what w n, what nesting means, how you would utilize quotations, things like asterisks, question marks, all different things to really elevate your search results to make sure you're getting the most out of the things that you're searching for. Also on this page are all of our other limiters that you saw on the basic search, but you can obviously put them in immediately. So for example, if you know you want full text, you know you want academic journals, uh, you know you want documents that were written after you know, 2015, you can apply all those filters and then go ahead and search. And here you're gonna find a much more refined and narrowed search results. Um, of course, you can always go ahead and remove the filters just like we did before. Or if you wanna revise your search, you can just click this button here It'll bring you right back to the page you are on, and you can make any changes that you deem necessary. Okay, any questions on um, the advanced search? Okay, perfect. I'm going to go ahead 
and jump back into our PowerPoint then. Oh, naturally. One moment. Going through. All right. So the um, next thing I wanted to showcase for you is our hidden gem. So this is just a bit of information that most folks don't know. There is actually a Chrome extension for opposing viewpoints available. So if you use Chrome and you use Google a lot, you can install this Chrome extension, and then you'll always see um, your Galen Context opposing viewpoints results um, with your Google results. So this is a really great way to start utilizing opposing viewpoints if you really kind of ingrain to use Google. Let me go ahead and check the chat quickly. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Julia. Um, and let me go ahead and showcase for you how easy it is to get this extension. So if you go to the Chrome Web Store, you can always click this button here as well. I think this button actually. Manage extensions, whatever works for you. You can go ahead and if you don't have it, it's just going to say add extension. You can click add. It's going to pop it in. You're going to have to log in. And then whenever you go to Google after you've logged it, after you've added the extension, which takes all of, you know, two minutes, you'll be able to do a search like the one we did already. And in addition to your web content, you're also going to be able to showcase content from your um, library scale and context opposing viewpoints results. I think this is just useful for folks, again, who are used to starting at Google and not necessarily within a database. Uh, and if you click on any of these, because you're already logged in via the extension, it's going to bring you directly into that piece of content. No worrying about having to go to the home page or what have you. But when you're on this page, of course, that means you can use all the great tools we just talked about, the accessibility tools, the explore tools, the search tools, whatever uh, works for you. So just something that you can use or you can suggest, um, you know, your fellow students use to sort of elevate their current research experience. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about questions. Uh, any questions on what we've talked about today? Um, any, any, anything at all that you might want to know further on? And if there are any questions, that's totally okay. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide here. Okay, so if you want additional information on opposing viewpoints, you can go to support.gill.com. Uh, you can go to the actual page, which is just products backslash OVIC, or you can just go to support.gill.com and search for opposing viewpoints. Uh, there you can find things like additional trainings, uh, tutorials, um, VPATs, marketing materials, title lists, info on the Chrome extension, what have you. Um, and if you ever have a question that pops up later that you want help on, you can reach out to my team at gale.academicoutreach.com as well. And we're always happy to assist in any way that we can. Um, so that is it for me, unless you guys have any questions. Uh, and just so you know, you can always go to this website here, support.gale.com slash training slash webinars to sign up and see all webinars we do every month. There's usually three to four covering um, resources like databases, but also primary sources and, and tips and tricks, if you will. Great. Thank you, Rachel. That was a great presentation. And I, I learned a few things uh, that I didn't know about opposing viewpoints. Good. That's always the, the, what we're striving for, right, is to get some information out there. Um, perfect. Well, if you don't have any other questions, I can let you guys go. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.